Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire, and this week I want to show you how to use yet another one of my new peacock stencil designs and my rice paper on a roll to create a unique effect with a gel plate. Um, I want to remind you that if you would like more in-depth tutorials every week, you could consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon is my page where for a monthly subscription, you have access to all the material that was ever um, published all the archive material and everything moving forward and I have a new in-depth tutorial video every week oftentimes multi-part um, and there are a couple of full-length workshops in my patreon so if you're interested in checking that out the link is in your upper right hand corner um, I appreciate all the support and let's go out to the garage studio and check out this week's tidbit welcome to my studio so yeah, as you can see, I have been playing with making these prints, um, experimenting and playing with color combinations and effects so that I could create this video for you this week. So what I'm, what I've been playing with is, um, rice paper on a roll. And this is a 18 inch roll. This is a sushi gami rice paper roll. This paper is not sized on either side. It's thinner and tears really organically. Um, and really works wonderfully on a roll for uh, for this uh, project. So all the supplies for the um, for this tutorial are always going to be on my supply list and that link is in the upper right hand corner. The other thing I'm going to grab is a sheet of palette paper, a 12 by 16 sheet of glossy palette paper glossy one side palette paper. This is important so that when we're using wet watery paint, we can uh, keep it contained so it doesn't go all over the desktop. The other uh, element is this is my plumage stencil from my new Peacock collection with joggles.com. I'll be using that. I'm using quinacridone magenta and cadmium yellow golden fluid acrylics. I'm using my eight by 10 gel plate and my six inch gel plate uh, gel press brayer. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a peacock print, a plumage peacock stencil print on my sushi gami rice paper roll with the cadmium yellow. So I'm gonna put the cad yellow out on the plate. I'm gonna roll it evenly with the brayer. I might even add a little pyro orange to that just to sort of give it a little bit of a mottled warm color look. Um, so I'll put a little pyrrole and I'll just sort of lightly move that around so it's not completely blended. That could be kind of fun. So I'm just moving that really lightly. And then I'm going to put the plumage stencil into the paint on the plate. And I'm going to take my roll of sushi gami rice paper and I'm going to pull a print up on this top edge of the paper. Now I'm going to use the heels of the palms of my hand to make sure I'm pressing down through to get good contact and get the paper to go down through all the small laser cut details of this stencil. So rice paper is great for that because it's malleable, it's soft, and it'll go down in between those spaces. The gel plate is great for this because it provides a squishy surface for us to do this pressing down through the stencil on top of. So once you think you've got a good impression, I always say, let's take a peek and make sure before we dismount the paper that we've removed all the paint in between the negative spaces of the stencil, of the mask. This is actually a mask. So I'm looking, I'm peeking before I dismount the paper and I feel like I've done that. I've gotten all that paint out of the negative spaces. The nice thing about this modeled effect with the orange not totally mixed up with the yellow is you get sort of lights and dark area, which is pretty cool. Now, the nice thing about the roll of paper is I'm gonna put the ghost print right here next to this print. So I'm gonna pull the stencil, the mask up, and I'm gonna quickly grab the ghost print right next to the initial print. The ghost print is the paint that was trapped underneath the mask when it sat on the gel plate. So I lifted it and I quickly printed it because that paint is wet briefly. So now I've got two prints. I've got the positive mask print and the ghost mask print, and they're side by side on this nice 18 inch roll of paper. So now I'm going to put my gel plate aside and I'm going to put my prints 
face down onto this um, palette sheet. And actually I lied. I'm going to bring the gel plate back out and use it as a, um, a palette. So I'm just going to put out the quinacridone magenta paint. And I'm also going to use a little anthroquinone blue. I want to use dark colors here. You want to go for a contrast. So I did light color on the front and I'm going to do contrast, very dark colors on the back. You want to do light on the front and dark on the back for the best results are going to give you high contrast. Of course, you might be a fan of subtle and that's fine as well. But for demonstration purposes, I find that the high contrast usually gives you the wow factor more than anything else. So I've got a one inch brush here in a bucket of water and I'm just adding a lot of water into that paint that's sitting on my gel plate as a palette. And I'm gonna brush it wet and watery because that is what's gonna make it soak through all the way through this rice paper to the other side. Now this will not happen with regular paper on a sketch pad or from a, a regular roll. It is only rice paper that soaks all the way through. If you were to try this on book pages or regular paper, it's not gonna work. So, and you need to have a decent amount of water. So keep adding water into the brush with the bucket and I'm just brushing this very wet and watery on the back. Now I'm gonna grab some of that blue and kind of mix it in to make a purple and wet and watery, I'm gonna bring that over some of the edges of the magenta. So I'm not keeping it compartmentalized, I'm letting it bleed and blend over the edges of the magenta and filling up the rest of the print, both prints. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this anthroquinone blue. This is a very nice dark indigo blue I'm letting it bleed and blend into that magenta. Maybe I should grab a little more magenta for the other end. Mix the magenta with the anthroquinone blue and we'll get a little bit of a nice purple. That's a nice dark purple right there with the two blended together. A lot of water and now the reveal. So this color has soaked all the way through this Rice paper on a roll and our yellow print on the front is not gonna be affected by these, these dark colors because we're not going on top of the yellow, we're coming in from behind the yellow. So we're gonna soak this color in from behind the yellow and the yellow is gonna stay vibrant on the front but we're gonna have these wonderful colors that are gonna come through from the back in a wet, watery, kind of blended effect. So have a look at this. Isn't that lovely? It's kind of fragile because it's so wet, so you wanna be very careful with it and lay it onto the palette sheet to dry. So we're just gonna lay it right on this palette sheet to dry, and because this is a shiny palette sheet, this will not stick. So when this is dry, we will be able to peel it right off of that palette sheet without any problem. You certainly don't wanna lay it on any surface that it will stick to. So here we have, let me move this so you can see this, a beautiful, and I really like the way that the purple was created and that the blue blended into the magenta on the back, and yet our yellow is still vibrant on the front. The other benefit of this process in the rice paper is when you tear this paper for collage, it is not gonna have white edges because we have color that is soaked all the way through. We're gonna have colored edges. We're not gonna have to worry about white edges because we've soaked color all the way through the core of this Sushi Gami 18 inch rice paper roll. So this is my plumage mask by joggles.com with the gel plate and gel printing on the front and soaking a darker contrasting color through the back side. And that again is gonna give us colored edges when we tear this paper and letting those two colors sort of meander and blend together with a lot of wet water is giving me nice soft edges of magenta into blue becoming purple. And that yellow orange is so vibrant on the front. So there you go, another way to use rice paper, gel printing, and the Peacock Collection stencils that I have just designed for joggles.com. Happy Friday, and thank you for being here.